Hey up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to York City where today is all about the Europa League semi-final. We're in Milan and then they come to us at York. It's also a chance to get into a third final. Yeah, that's right. If we get past Milan here, I'll be doing home away legs and skipping the Everton game in between for you guys. If we get past Milan here, this is the third final of the year. Premier League's out of the window, but third final of the year. Man City, by the way, still leading the Premier League and they're in the semi-finals there. This is irritating. But the two games in between were a 1-0 win at Newcastle and a 2-0 win against West Ham at home. Vidal in the 13th minute at St James's Park did the business there. Quite tense, if we're honest. And 2-0, slightly more comfortable. Madeira in a... Well, Madeira, the, pretty much everything was done at the opposite ends of that first half. It's a Diop was sent off after 23 seconds. Madeira then got a penalty in the 45th minute. Injury time with the first half and then Maxons made it two in the 81st minute. Frankly, they had 10 men. That should have been worse than it was. To play an entire match with 10 men and only lose 2-0 isn't too bad. But 2-0 for us, and that's what we will take. First leg is at the San Siro, and then Everton happens, and then semi-final part two at the York Community Stadium where Milan come to us. So. We're also, apparently, on our highest ever winning run. Despite those unbeaten runs at the very beginning of the whole series, apparently this is actually our longest run of consecutive wins. Wasn't expecting that, but that's a thing that's happening. Uh, Castillo is having to play entire 90 minutes despite being recommended for 45, just purely because the other option is Xiaonan, who's just as tired. The good news is I've not had any fatigue messages yet, which at the very least means I've been rotating well enough to avoid that. Speaking of rotating, of course, Teco comes in in the defensive midfielder role for this away leg. And also at the same time, Koito is the more well-rounded, complete forward. So he's going to step in there. Otherwise, don't really feel like changing anything else. Except for maybe Jack Harrison for Cantoro. Also, last time I did this was clearly in Iambi. So back to complete. Thank you, Shout. Almost forgot the goalkeeper. Big game. Hidalgo is going to be in goal. Castillo, Coolridge, Rick and Shao. Teco, Grimes and Seri in the middle, of course. Madeira. And Harrison in the inside forward roles and Coitel front, as just mentioned. I just noticed there, through all the blurriness of it, warming up the match. Harrison's now only regarded as a two star player for our side. That's a bit of a depressing notification for our best player over there this year. And there's a highlight from the kickoff, which worries me greatly, actually. Castillo's going to run a little bit down this right side and get tackled, get it back again. He does get it back again. Grimes, across to Teco, it's back out to Castillo, who continued his run, and the number seven just didn't bother following him. Good job there, mate. Grimes. Must be an aging Cucurello left back there a little bit now. Probably actually still early 30s-ish. Coiter, Madeira, Grimes. Well, that was an attempt. Donnarumma's still in goal for Milan. He didn't get taken by anyone. Only 30. Cucurello, yeah, 30 as well. They have another, the other defender's called John Max. Determination 17. Tackling is not the best, but yeah, he's very good. I can see why they don't really concede. Rhys James is there. Never knew, didn't know that. Yeah, it's a pretty good team. It's basically a team of youngsters at the start of the game. Let's be real here. Donnarumma, James, Cucurella, Odegaard, Jovic, Cliver, Sengizunga's on the bench as well, Romanoli, might be a little bit older, yeah, 34. 22 minutes before we get another highlight, and there's Odegaard taking it from quite deep, Hidalgo will gather that quite easily. Rick will play this out to... I can't get over John Max, he's got to be offside, surely. Yep, goal with you, and uh, I, thought I didn't even really mention it as it was happening, but yeah, there's Pro, but yeah, he's offside. Good yard or two. We're not really in this match though, so we're going to demand a little bit more. Are we actually having... No, we're having more possession, just not having shots from said possession. Madeira will chase this. Uh, he's going to keep it in, but just to give it to them. Miles will just let go of a goal kick there, mate. Doesn't really help if you keep it in just to give it to them. Jovic has done 24, and 24 is Rick, right? Jovic, Jovic, whatever. Odegaard, Seri, Madeira now. Oh, Madeira's pulled something there. That's that's happened in real time. I've seen it. And Coit has been taken out. It's a foot injury. Hang on. How did he bruise his ankle whilst running with the ball? I saw that injury happen in real time there. Oh my god, Seri's got a Seri's got a free kick against Donnarumma. Tenth goal of the season. Not quite as prolific this year, actually. But tenth goal of the season. About half of them have been free kicks. So I mean this wonderful free kick. Donnarumma had no chance. I'm just trying to work out how Madeira's managed to bruise his ankle when no one was near him. Has he managed to bruise has he managed to bruise his ankle by hitting it with the ball? Teco anyway, he's managed to get that ball. Harrison? <laughs> Har Jack Harrison's the best player in world football. That's that's a sentence you don't expect to hear on Football Manager or just ever, really. Um not the greatest from Cucurella there, gotta be said. Teco though, nabs that ball. Harrison's there, and 
Well, he, he's, flummox he's flummoxed all over there by going near post. Jack Harrison is one goal away from being my top goal scorer this year. I've just realised. In fairness, like, my striker position has been split quite dramatically this year. He ooh, nearly gets it there. Like, Alor has 14 and Coita has 17. So, bear in mind rotation. But Jack Harrison is nearly my top goal scorer. Rick heads over. How long was between those two goals? A minute. Well, I certainly got more for my demand more. Anyway, I might... Like, it's a bruised ankle. Madeira should be fine, but I might have to take him off. Venturelli's actually doing quite... Hang on. I thought Venturelli was at Norwich. Has he gone to Milan in the January? Or was there just another Venturelli on the stream? Southampton, Norwich team? Anyway, Madeira's got on to loose ball. His bruised ankle seems to be okay again. Except you can't keep the ball. I must have a look at Venturelli when this half kicks off again. Please keep it going assertively. And then follow it up with assertive faith. It's a different Venturelli. Right save, different Venturelli. Cucurella to Odegaard. Back to Cucurella. Look at that. John Max keeps it away from Coiter. Imagine being called John Max. I mean, it'd be better if Max was his surname, because at the very least on register format, he, he would appear as Max John. The most John you could possibly be. But that's been hoofed up. Courage will get on the end of that. He's wandered way too far forward for my liking there. But Madeira is on the ball. He's moving in, which he's going to have a crack from distance. That's over. With the injury and the fitness levels, I think I might be taking him off. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it now. I mean, it's not good to take an injury at this point. It's a bruise. It's only a bruise, so he should be okay for games in the future. Might not play against Everton. Probably won't have played anyway, though. Uh, I'll just bring you a result of that. Jovic has sort of got away from Ricky, but he's been pegged into a corner there. Proper, or proper, as it's actually spelt. That's hit three people and finally gone in from under. This. I mean, imagine it's meant to be pronounced proper. I don't suspect he's English. But Hidalgo saves well. So it saves well twice. And he just ends up in under his path. It's so unlucky. That the both saves went back to their player. That's worth knowing. Two all isn't the worst. It's a bottle. Two all is a bottle. But two all is not the worst possible outcome because two away goals. This means we just draw one or nil nil one or Coit has gone the end of that. That's a oops. Well, at the very least, he's edged away Jack Harrison from being the top goal scorer again. As Coit moves up to 18 goals for this year, far more prolific than Escobar ever was. That's one thing that needs to be said straight off the bat. There, both actually Coit and Alawal have scored more in a year than Escobar ever did in the two years prior. Looks like that was Venturelli's mistake, since he's been taken off with a red rating. But Boqueta, Odegaard, and now it's 3-1, of course, so the more away goals we get, the better everything will be in the long run, hopefully. Poiva, Michio, under... What? Can we just mark him, please? Just... just... mark him. Destroy his feet. He's already on hard tackling and pressing, but apparently not marking. Yeah, he just gets away from two defenders and bops it in. At the very least, this removes 1-0 and 2-1 from Milan's possible turnovers in the second leg. Anyway, for a brief second there, I forgot we were playing in blue and got very panicked. He'd thrown out to a player in blue. Anyway, Seri's going to come forward here. Ponce. I've not made any other changes, I've just realised. Ponce's going to go from there. That's audacious. But that was the end of the highlight. I thought that was such a rubbish shot. I couldn't possibly be the end of that highlight. Castillo's a bit tired now. I mean, Shao's booked, but I've got to bring him over. I mean, Shell's not doing that much better himself. Once he's going to get under this throw, he's put it straight across the box, and Harrison, not to be outdone, makes it 4-2, and it's definitely standing, so... How, how is Jack Harrison? This is the most bewildered I've been by a player ever. Is there something about Jack's? I remember Jack Clark on last year's game for Burnley, when we brought him in, just played way above his level every time we played him. Both the guys in the middle are a little bit tired now as well. I'm just thinking of the number of games they're going to still have to play before the end of the season. Maxence for Grimes, who is the lesser of the two performers today. I might even just go cautious as they probably go attack. attack yeah, they're 3-4-3, th they're three, three, very attacking right now. We'll go a little bit more cautious for these last five minutes, I think. As, well, he's clean through. Just maybe keep your eyes open, defenders, for their attacking players, please. Just, you know, watch where they move and don't let them do that. Shall, though, is going to run forward. I forgot he was on this side, actually. Ponce, good God. Does anyone else feel like your team's overperforming Europe? I thought it was just Premier League teams, and then the Hertha Berlin thing happened as well. But Ponce's seventh goal of the season, that, what a goal that is. It's a brilliant goal. No chance for Donnarumma there. It's five goals against a team that has conceded less than 20 goals in the past two years, at the very least, in Serie A. So, I don't know what the rest of Serie A are doing, but may, they should really be taking notes. I mean, they've scored two, and, well, that's somehow countered. How is, hang on, how is this countered? I'm fairly certain the player that it hits on its way through is offside. It's countered as Cucurella's goal, even though it comes off Michio in the middle. Is he onside? He, no, he's definitely offside, Michio. Does it not hit him? Must not have hit Michio. Well, it's five, th no. John Max has hit the bar. It's still another highlight. Can this game end, please? Can this game please end? 
What is going on in this match? Michio, he's hit the bar as well. Somehow that's counted as two separate woodwork. It may have hit the bar and then hit the post. Because that, that just got counted as two separate woodwork incidents with the same shot. Which is impressive, really. Um, can this game end now, please? Nyambi, just, just keep the ball, mate. Just keep the ball. That is brilliant work by Nyambi. This might not end up in anything, but that's brilliant work by now. Why did you end the game there as we were just about to attack again? We were entering, we entered their final third and that's where you end the game. There was a chance for a sixth goal there. I re actually don't know what to say in this one. We still conceded three goals. Well, um, I really hope they didn't televise the Man City game in England. I suspect they might have, but I really hope they didn't. I mean, this is just crazy. He's 32. He's wearing a Leeds badge. I can only presume he was on loan from Man City for two years. I'm actually looking at his record here. 25 goals for Celtic in three years. 21 goals for Monaco in 58 appearances. 20 goals for Nuremberg. Apparently only three goals in 25 appearances for me. That makes no sense. What? Have they all been in the Cups? Seven Continental goals. Seven goals in the Cup. So he's non-existent in the league. 6.7 is his average there from 12 starts. But stick him in a cup competition. 7.65 for the Europa League and 7.99 for the domestic cups. What? Jack Harrison is the most baffling player I've ever met. And yeah, they were loans. Like you look at Celtic and obviously that's Celtic. That's fine. They're Farmers League, let's be honest. Monaco though, who have PSG ahead of them. And it's a bit of a Farmers League as well. But Monaco, not necessarily the best team or second best team anymore. He did well he did well there for three years, and Nuremberg in the Bundesliga 2 bought him for 15 and a half million. How they afforded that in that division, I have no idea. Must have got relegated that year or whatever, but I mean you look at that and that looks stupid, considering we know how actually good he is. 7.18 is his overall average. I feel like I get asked about Xiao Nan in every other press conference. It's his mentality that impresses me most. I just noticed that Bradley Saxon's injury has gone to Orange, so he's not too far from coming back again. And I'll be back for the second leg, actually. So yeah, I've just got to get through this Everton game and I'll let you know how it goes. Sorry, I just got distracted by this name on the ticker tape as it went past. Ben Van Den Ban. You are, you are allowed to have more than three letters per part of your name. You are aware of that, right? Ben Van Den Ban. Good God, I wish he was better. Otherwise I'd sign him up straight away. I wasn't really going to mention anything else about the Premier League, but this has just happened. And, Liv and Klopp's just been sacked. We've got two games in hand on Liverpool here. We've got two games in hand on Man United. What happened with them? Hang on. Why are they only six points ahead of us? Oh, I didn't... 90th minute? They drew against Cardiff. That's massive. They've only got one more league game. That isn't us as well. That's against Leicester. Don't forget our remaining games against Arsenal and Tottenham though. So, I say two games in half. One of them is this one, of course. The other one's the Tottenham game. So, yeah. Staying within three points might be useful though. By the way, just before I start this Everton game, I've just realised something. Ponce's now a natural inside forward. It's taken a year, but he's there. Two all. Way to the lead. They went 2-1 up thanks to a penalty, god damn it, and then late equaliser from Coiter, that's what you like to see. Does leave us a point behind Liverpool, but 5th and 6th doesn't really matter because we're definitely in the FA Cup final, and therefore that's between us and Man United, so 6th is Europa League regardless if we win that or not. So, also importantly, 11 points ahead of Arsenal in 7th, so cannot finish 7th. The only drama otherwise is Ponce's out for the rest of the season, he took an injury between the Everton game and now, didn't happen in the match itself. But we're all here, we're all ready. Submit that team. It's Hidalgo, Castillo, Coleridge, Rick, Shao, Grimes, Seri, Madeira, Vidal, Cantoro, and Alawar up front. Actually, no one we're doing. Jack Harrison needs to be in that team. Submit. Bradley Saxon is not, in fact, ready for this match. He might be for the Arsenal match in two days' time. Probably not full commitment still, either way. At this point, you deserve to be in the final because apparently you just want to be in all of them. By the way, if you're wondering why the door's closed behind me, it's just because someone decided to hoover the foyer between all the flats. As I was just about to start recording this second leg. Had to wait for that. Shall anyway, Harrison, Sari. It's, well, six now, and that's just made things a little bit more comfortable already. It's, I don't understand that. It's, I'll be honest, it's late on a Sunday. Why you're doing it at that time of the day, I have no idea. You'd think you'd be safer recording at this time of day on a Sunday night, but no, no, not really, Sorry. Banging goal, let's be honest there. 11 goals for the season now. Starting to be a little bit more reflective, of course, of his abilities. Why am I not seeing the other match? There it is, 0-0. No, no. Sorry, free kick. It's a bit deep for me, an actual attempt at goal. He's done weird with that one, I'm going to be honest. Rick, though, is done well to get, beat a defender there, considering he is one himself. Grimes, yeah, that didn't go well. They're in and still in. Good save by Hidalgo there. I should just, I should just mention on the weird hoovering front, it's... Uh, the foyer area between the flats is made of, uh, well, the surface is basically cheap tile, like lino tile thing, which is usually mopped. 
which makes it even more baffling. Shao, anyway, coming forward here. Rubbish. In 52 minutes, we've had 70% of the possession, pretty much. Oh, Man City have scored. Mm. When Lazio kept that a nil-nil in the first leg, I was feeling kind of hopeful that they might be able to just nick it at their own ground. Because considering Milan are the top team in Italy, I would happily take Lazio in the final. Ah, great. Jovic through to Zanelli. That's just wide. I've just realised... We're going to play three finals this year against Chelsea, Manchester United and Manchester City as things stand. Pretty certain they're all in the top four of our own division. Of course, two of them are domestic cups anyway, so that was bound to happen. But I need Lazio to turn it around. I really want them to turn it around because I don't want to play Man City in that final. It'd be nice if, it'd be nice if we were just gifted the Champions League spot anyway because they're going to win our division. It's not a thing, but it would be nice if it was. This highlight continues. 43 minutes approaching. Rick on the ball. Out to Shalnan. Harrison now. Seri. Seri still. Tackled into Vidal. And that's worked his way over to Shal on this side over here. And whipped into the box. Madeira's not there. Harrison nearly got an 18th goal of the season. Half time 1 0. 1 0 to both English sides at half time. Realistically, it's a fairly straightforward team talk. Just I'm pleased with what's going on. I'm not really sure. <sighs> I mean, Seri's obviously the best player on the pitch for us right now. But I might take him off sooner rather than later. Just like he's not tired. We've rested everyone. They've made three changes. We've rested everyone. Like we rested everyone before the Everton match. We rested everyone before this match. So everyone's doing okay. Is me or is Reese James on the wrong side of the pitch for Reese James? They've scored one, but they're trying. Reese James is playing left back, right? I'm not going crazy here. It's a good goal from Jovic. It's just a great run. And well, Hidalgo's made the dive early, and it's made Jovic's choice of attempt a shot there really easy. Shout. Grimes. That will get to Seri, just about. Castillo. Over to Harrison. Now it's one all. I'm slightly more hesitant taking a Seri off. Although if he gets a second here... Actually, no. If he gets a second, it means keep him on for a hat-trick. Ah, damn. That would have been awkward. Can anyone but Seri score a second, please? Please. For us, just to clarify. I'm not getting long enough on the main page to see if Reese James is playing on the wrong side of the pitch. Yeah, he's playing a left-back because Pavard's on the pitch. Clip this if it all goes wrong, but Seri's coming off. He's the most tired player on that pitch, so I'm just wanting to keep that one sorted out because Arsenal's only two days away. There's... Well, I think there's two days gap, but same with Shaw as well. Saxton may be nearly back for a little bit of time, which is why I'm okay with sort of Castillo still being on the pitch. But Harrison, eh, not 18th goal of the season yet either. Yeah, so Shaw again, second best player on this pitch. Where is Nyambi? There he is. Is it me or has Nyambi got better at complete wing back? He used to be not good at it at all. Now he's over 50% on it. And he actually managed to train that at the age of 31. Or am I just going crazy? Madeira, anyway. He's not going to have a shot here because he's been closed down far too easily. And Reese James is back at left back, I've just noticed. Oh, they've changed the system entirely, actually. They've gone three at the back with Reese James as a wing back. Harrison's still not 18th goal of the season. Come on, Harrison. Come on, lad. I've just realised the time. This is an entirely pointless change. One all, final. You've done it. You're in the final. Congratulations. Well, as we said, yeah. So Arsenal in two days' time. Tottenham two days after that. It's not great planning. The final's in Scotland. I really would have, I definitely would have liked Lazio then. Because th at least we wouldn't have had to travel that far. Two million as well for that. That's not too bad. John Max is brilliant. We have to now play Arsenal on Sunday. Then Tottenham the following Wednesday. Man United the following Sunday. Man United again the following Saturday. And then Manchester City the following Thursday after that. And you're going to see all five of those games. Join us again tomorrow as we play Arsenal, Tottenham and Manchester United. Then the FA Cup final will be its own episode and the Euro Cup final will be its own episode as well. We'll do a little bit of end of season talk in both of those, I think, to spread it out a little bit just to make sure they're full episodes. Because the way things have been going with the epic matches we've had, there's no other word for it. The matches in these episodes have been absolutely sensational of late. So I'm really expecting one of those two finals just to be one nil boring game with like two highlights. But anyway, join us next time as we finish off the season. All this cup chaos, there's still a season to finish off here. Win the game in hand against Tottenham. Win the game against Arsenal as well. And then it's all to play for on the final day with Man United as well. Let's not forget that. If we beat Arsenal, if we beat Tottenham, we will be at, at least within two points of Manchester United. Meaning we'll be two points behind them on that final day. Everything still to play for in the league as well. So I'll see you again for that tomorrow. Until then, ta-ra. I did that too early. What am I doing?